Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the chi-square critical values for confidence intervals. Uh, you can use the same concept for hypothesis test two. Um, just remember that with confidence intervals, what's happening is in our chi-square distribution, the 95% is centered in the middle. Um, the 95% is written as point. 9.5. And with a confidence interval, you're going to have a chi-square lower limit or a left limit, and you're also going to have a chi-square upper limit or a right limit. So the notation used in the textbook that I teach from right now uses this notation. Your textbook could give something different. Um, so your symbols may be different in your text. Just use whatever is given to you. So what's going to happen is that in the calculator, the way that the calculator works is it starts um, all the way to the left and adds until you tell it to stop, okay? Um, so when you're finding your chi-square to the left, we need to know the area to the left of that one. And then when you're finding your chi-square to the right, um, you need to know your area to the left of that one. So it would be the same thing in a hypothesis test. You just have to know your area to the left of whatever your critical value is. Okay, so the one thing that you can use and the relationship, basically what's happening is that 95% is between. Our alpha levels are just the areas that are on the outside. Uh, so what I could do is I could just find, to find alpha, I could do 1 minus 0.95. And that gives me 0 0.05. So a 95% confidence interval is the same thing as having an alpha level of 0 0.05 in hypothesis tests. So if you're not to hypothesis test yet and haven't been introduced to alpha, you will see this later in the course. Typically, confidence intervals are done first, and then you'll get into hypothesis testing. But there is a relationship between the confidence intervals and the alpha. So if you can find that connection, it does make it a little bit easier later in the course. All right, so we need to find our area to the left. So basically what's going to happen is that we know that on the outside of 0.95, half of our value would be down below and half of our value would be here because we're going to center it. So this would be 0 0.025 and this would also be 0 0.025 because half of 5% is 0 0.025. Okay. Um, if you were just doing a left tail or a right tail, you would just look at your drawing. It's always good to kind of shade whichever direction that you're going to be going. Um, so in a confidence interval, we're looking for this part in between, and we're looking for where does that start and where does that end? And that's what our critical values are telling us. Okay. So the nice thing is in your calculator, um, the TI Inspire does have this programmed in there to be able to find inverse of chi-square. So it's very straightforward. All you have to do is find some information. Okay, the information that you need to know is your area to the left of each of your critical values, and you need to know your degrees of freedom. Okay, so our degrees of freedom, if you recall, comes from our sample size. So our sample size is 25. So our degrees of freedom is n minus 1, so I would just do 25 minus 1, which would give us 24. Okay, and the area to the left of chi-square um, to our left, so our area to the left of this one is just going to be the 0 0.025. And so that's what we're going to find first. So let me go ahead and grab my calculator. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a calculator screen. And um, so I just selected the calculator screen at the bottom. If you're already in the calculator, that's fine. You don't have to start a new one. And then I would just go to menu and I would go to option six statistics and then option five distributions. So six statistics and then option five distributions. And if you notice in here, they do have an inverse chi-square. So I would just choose option nine. So option nine is inverse chi-square. The area is always going to be the area to the left. So we just found that that was 0 0.025. And then our degrees of freedom, we found is 24. And then all I have to do is hit enter and that gives me my value. So 12.4. 
zero, one would be my critical value at the lower end. And then to find the chi-squared to the right, this value here, we have to have the entire area until we get to the bottom. So I can either take 0 0.025 and add it to 0.95 and see that the area to the left is 0.975, or I can do 1 minus 0 0.025. Either way, it gives me the same thing. So now to find the right side, I would just go back in, and instead of plotting in 0 0.025, when I go to the menu, and statistics, and then my distributions. I would go down to the inverse chi, which we said was nine, and our area would be 0.975. And my degrees of freedom are 24. And then I would just hit enter. I could have also just copied this one up there and changed it to 0.975, that might be easier. Um, and I get 39.364. So that's it. That's all you have to do in order to find the critical values for a confidence interval. You would do the same process for a hypothesis test. You just have to make sure that you have the area to the left when you are plugging it into your calculator. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.